What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and this week we have a new release announcement from Horizon Hobby, the newly updated and upgraded E-Flight Viper 70. The original Viper 70 was introduced in 2018 and was quite a hit. It boasted 6S power and a size range that saw many 70mm EDFs still powered on 4S. It was a versatile performer, comfortable at slow and high speeds, and being one of the first high-performance sport jets equipped with SAFE, it was easier to handle for a wider range of skill levels. This one sports a change-up in the color scheme. Where the original was blue, you now have higher viz orange, and that may come in handy for orientation because Horizon promises more speed, power, and performance. Of course, there's lots of new features. Let's get it together, and we'll give you all the details. As with many airplanes from E-Flight, Horizon says the Viper 70 can be assembled in less time than it takes to charge a battery. As you can see from the low part count, that's true. You'll start with a horizontal, you plug in your two elevator servos and tuck the wires in the provided channel, you'll use four bolts to attach that. Then you'll move to the vertical, you plug in your rudder servo, tuck the wire away in the same channel, you'll attach the vertical with one bolt on either side and one up front. Next, you feed the wires from the one-piece ling through the hole in the bottom of the fuselage and plug them into the well-marked Y harnesses and extensions inside the airplane. You'll use six bolts to attach the wing to the fuselage. One quick tip when it comes to the wiring, this can be a bit tedious, so take your time and be patient. One thing we recommend, take the Y harness for the flaps from inside the fuselage, Bring that through the hole in the bottom of the fuse and plug your flaps in from the wing first so you can pull those through. The leads coming off the wing for the flaps are pretty short. All the other leads are long enough for you to plug them in inside the fuse once the wing's fully installed. And that's pretty much it. We're done with the assembly. Here she is. The Viper 70 has a wingspan of 43.31 inches, a length of 40.39 inches, our example weighs 4 pounds, 3.7 ounces, with a 4,000 milliamp 6L pack. It's outfitted with digital Metal Gear servos throughout, and it's intended for use with common 3,200 to 4,000 milliamp 6L packs. A key upgrade in the new Viper 70 is the power system. A new larger 1900 kV motor, a factory balanced 70 mm 12 blade fan unit, and the new Avian 85 amp Smart Light ESC give this new Viper about a 10% speed increase and better vertical performance over the previous version. That ESC also offers thrust reversing as an option when you use a compatible spectrum transmitter that has a minimum of 7 to 8 channels. The Viper is equipped with an AR631 receiver, so it has AS3X and optional safe select. When a compatible spectrum transmitter is used, the ESC and receiver now provide smart telemetry feedback, including flight log information, minimum and maximum voltage, minimum and maximum ESC status, on the fly ESC status, on the fly flight pack voltage, gyroscope information, and a G meter. Just to be clear on the channel requirements, if you're using a compatible spectrum transmitter and you want to choose either thrust reversing or safe select, then seven channels will do. If you want to be able to utilize both, you're going to need eight. Like the previous version, the new Viper 70 of course retains flaps and retracts, but the new one has a significant upgrade when it comes to the landing gear. It's equipped with new shock absorbing struts and softer tires are standard. Those two upgrades make this airplane much more forgiving to land and you have a lot less tendency to bounce when the landings are not ideal. So when it comes to setup, first thing you're going to have to do is obviously program your transmitter. The manual is reasonably thorough. It is written in the new step-by-step -step format so it makes programming your transmitter much easier and Horizon is still on to the idea of promoting that rather than downloading setup files so that you become more familiar with your transmitter. That's a good skill to have. We completely agree with that. When it comes to control surface setup, the manual covers everything. It covers the balance point. It covers throw, what hole your push rods are supposed to be in, in both the servo arm and the control horn gives you some expo ideas, so you're pretty well set manual-wise there. You need to bear in mind, though, that they are setting this airplane up 
for the lighter of the recommended packs. They recommend a 3200. Obviously, the lighter, the better, the most performance that you're going to get. That said, the airplane is pulling more amps because of a higher performance power system. So the flight time is going to suffer. I like a really good flight time. So we used batteries, the 4000, at the top end of the range because we know that we can set up for that and make up for the fact that the airplane is a little bit nose heavy and given what we like to do with an EDF like this, the airplane still flies fine and we can get a four and a half minute flight time rather than a two and a half or three minute flight time, which I personally like. So we're gonna tell you how to set up for that. Now the Spectrum packs are always gonna be lighter and typically smaller than other packs and Unfortunately, I don't have any of those. Now, I've got some on the way. I absolutely am going to be flying this thing on the Spectrum 4000s, and I've got a 3200 coming just so I can see what it's like on the 3200, but I know me. I'm going to go with the longer flight time, and I know some of you. The last thing you want is an airplane where you have to buy proprietary batteries to have fun with it. You want to be able to use the maybe the 4000s that you already have that might be a little bit bigger than the Spectrum Pack. So while the proprietary batteries are always going to be a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, and probably the best thing for the jet, we've proven you can absolutely fly it with something different. This is not a Spectrum 4000 Pack. It is a cheap pack. It is heavier, bulkier than the Spectrum Packs, and we've been able to get them in here now. To get this fat pack in here, obviously we had to put it on its side. That helps. There's no Velcro on the sides. If we put Velcro on the side to hold it in place, that's going to set it up too high and then we can't get our hatch on. So we just cut a little foam spacer out of one of the dividers in the box the Viper came in and we just sit it right there. Battery's all the way forward and it's not going anywhere. Once you plug up your ESC, there's a channel right here. You just push those wires all the way back and that enables you, even with a bigger pack that's not a small spectrum pack, if that's what you already have, you can get that hatch on and you can fly this airplane just fine. So we know that the Viper comes with a thrust reversing as an option now and you heard me say earlier that the manual was reasonably complete. The reason that I didn't say it was totally complete is because at least in the manual that I got, that process is omitted. They don't tell you how to activate the thrust reversing. Those instructions are online in several places. They're not hard to find, but we thought we'd just tell you the quick and dirty rundown. It is pretty simple, and it's all done with gimbal movements on your transmitter. You basically will scroll your mouse over past all the telemetry, and the thing that you end up on is avian programming. You'll follow the instructions for a couple of gimbal movements to get into the programming. On that first page, it will say brake type. You choose reverse. It will say brake force. You choose seven. Then you'll go through a second and third page and get to a fourth and final page. On the fourth and final page, you have to choose the channel under thrust reversing that you want, just whatever switch you've assigned it to, wherever you want your thrust reversing. And then right below that is exit and save. You do that and you're done and you got thrust reversing. So, you know we've chosen the heavier packs, we want the flight time, so we needed to set the airplane up for that. During the maiden flight, we couldn't get the airplane all the way to critical angle of attack with the heavier pack. I didn't have enough elevator throw in the nose heavy state that it was in to actually get the thing to completely stall and I was having a really hard time getting the nose up on landing and getting a really good flare out of it. I was running out of elevator. So we made some adjustments. We mechanically adjusted for more elevator and more rudder throw. We like to do that anyway because we like to tumble a sport jet and this thing tumbles great when you do that even with the heavier pack. But it also a byproduct is it knife edges better It'll hold a knife edge as long as you want to fly one, and it flares better now, and I can get it completely to critical angle of attack and actually get it to a full stall because I've got enough elevator even with the big pack in there. So we're going to show you our setup page before the flying as usual so you can see exactly what we did to set ours up 
for the heavier packs that we had on hand. You may not have to do all this with the lighter Spectrum 4000s. I'm not sure. We'll see when I get it. But it's just nice to know that you can tailor the airplane setup for whatever you're using and that's a good thing. So we're going to get to the flying. You're going to see the important part of the maiden flight. You're going to see what this airplane can do. You'll see some grass takeoffs and landings so you can see those new struts in action and the softer tires. And then we'll meet you back here and we'll do a bit of a flight debrief and give you our final thoughts. So here's the setup page and then enjoy the flying. That was our maiden takeoff. Now we're going to do our first stall test. And as you can see, it just establishes a rate of descent. Don't really have enough elevator to make it completely stall. We're going to come around here and try it again. Gear and flaps down. And once again, same thing. You can see the wings rock. That's me. I'm at full back elevator and I still have full control. And here's our first landing. And you'll notice I bounced this one. I can't find the right combination of power and flare to get the nose up enough. I ran out of elevator. Going even another landing in the nose heavy state before we added more elevator. And you can see I bounced it again. So this is the next morning. We've made the changes and changed our setup, and you'll see the difference in the stalls here. flaps down, she almost comes completely to a stop before she drops that same right wing. Recovery is easy, neutralize the controls and ease it out. This is our first landing with the setup for the heavier pack and you can see even with that heavy pack now we have enough elevator to get a nice flare, get the nose up and land smoothly. The Viper has a wide speed envelope and is very stable at slow speed and as you'll see here, it has a very good climb rate even from a very slow speed.
The Viper is very fast and offers a very impressive vertical for a 70 millimeter sport jet. As you can see, the Viper tumbles well, it handles inverted well, and we'll show you a good bit more of that in a moment. The CG reflects a bit nose heavy, and with the bigger pack, you'd think it would fly that way, but with the right setup, it really doesn't, and the long flight time is nice. We wanted to show you a faster high speed pass when we gave the jet a bit more time to build speed. Here we're going to do a knife edge above the tree so I can extend it a bit longer. Basically you can hold that until you get bored with it. Ops here, you'll see that the struts do their job. Something we didn't do in the sport flight that we wanted to demonstrate here, we're going to try and see if we can get the airplane in an accelerated stall. So I'm going to get her cooking and pull as hard as I can. And she just grooves. Those turns registered seven and a half G's on the G meter. On our grass landing, we're going to demo the thrust reversing.
So there you have it. Really, I like sport jets, just in general. Any good sport jet, I like it. And about the best compliment that I can give this airplane, the best flight impression that I can give you in one sentence is, it flies like a Viper 90. And I have to say, that impressed me. And it does it even with the heavier pack. It's stable at slow speeds. It's stable fast. It is very fast. It has really good vertical performance. It has good performance when you're slow and you punch it and you pull to the vertical just like the Viper 90. Now obviously the Viper 90 is a bit bigger. It's a bit more refined. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that this flies as good as that. It doesn't. But it's darn close. And for a 70 millimeter sport jet that is pretty impressive and that is not what I thought when I flew the earlier version of this airplane. I really didn't like it much. I had flown the Viper 90 first when I flew the earlier version of this and it was just okay. It did not make me think Viper 90. Could have been the guy's setup. It wasn't an airplane that I set up but to be honest with you I just think that the improvements that Horizon has incorporated in this airplane make the difference and I really like it. So I will say that Horizon hit their marks, what they intended to do with this airplane, the marks they wanted to hit, the features they wanted it to have, what they wanted it to be, it is. So I think what they're asking for it price point wise is fair given the performance, the versatility, and the options that you get with it and all the new features. It is jammed up and jelly tight and I really enjoy it and I love the fact that you get that much performance in a package small enough to keep assembled, easily store, and easily transport even in the smallest of cars without having to take it apart, which is nice because the wiring is a little bit tedious. If you had to take it apart, that would kind of annoy me. But look at the size of it. Luckily, you don't have to. So, Horizon says this is a skill level 2 jet. <clears throat> that would indicate that it is probably a good first EDF. And I agree with that to a point. It's going to be a good first EDF for some pilots, not for all pilots. If you're looking to get into EDFs right after a trainer, there are some haboos out there that will make that transition something that's doable for you. But this is not that jet. This is a good first jet for somebody that has some type of high performance model experience, whether it be a high performance warbird, an aerobatic plane. You need to have something other than an Aero Scout or an Apprentice under your belt before you jump into this. But once you get that licked, perfect jet for you and I think really experienced pilots like myself, like my buddy Dustin, we're going to have a blast with the wrenching this thing around. It is fun. So if you'd like to get one, we'll put a link in the description where you can do just that and when you do that it supports the channel. Heidi and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. That's it for us. We'll see you next week with something else cool with wings. It's not going to be this fast or orange, but it will have wings. <laughs>